Okay, so if you happen to see my previous video on wedging clay, I did explain the wedging process and everything, but um, I do want to just make one note that I also pointed out in that video. Sometimes when you wedge, you will get a spiral uh, rotation of the clay and it kind of becomes like a nice little avocado shape. You could go ahead and, you know, throw it as is, but a couple of things that I want to point out. First of all, if you have any gaps, like down here, like any um, uh, places where there might be an air pocket, you want to blend over those. But the other thing is, I want to point this out because if you've ever had an issue with maybe an S crack in the bottom, sometimes that might be the result of the spiral that is still existing in the clay. So one nice way to prevent that is rotate your clay in the um, perpendicular direction. So here I'm just going to make the ball so I know that the spiral was really going side to side instead of up and down and that is going to be a lot less likely to result in an S crack. So that's my first little tip. Now when you uh, begin you do want to think about the direction of your wheel. If you are right-handed your uh, direction of the wheel is typically counterclockwise. So as I turn this on, it is going counterclockwise. The reason for that is my left hand is going to be the hand which this clay is going to spin into. It's gonna spin into the heel of my hand and I want that to be super duper stable. If I have it going clockwise like this and I'm using my left hand, I won't have the, the same sort of um, uh, like leverage on it because as it's spinning into my hand, I'm pushing and it's it's going to help a lot. So um, I, I think in some Asian countries, sometimes people will have a clockwise direction and they throw more with what I would call it a left-handed uh you know, orientation, you can find what, what works best for you. For my students, the lefties in my class, I usually just have them reverse the wheel if they want to throw with the left hand dominant. That means when they center, they would be centering into the palm of the right hand. All right, so let's go ahead and start. So step one, after it's wedged, I'm going to take my hunk of clay that is more of a, a a ball than a square. Uh, you can throw with brand new clay out of the bag, but I tell my kids at least make it into a ball, even if you're not going to wedge it. Uh, step number two is we're going to attach it firmly into the middle. So you want to kind of like smack it down pretty firm into the middle of the bat. Now you will notice that I did not put water on my bat. I don't want to have slip on it. It depends on what kind of bat you have. Of course, if you have a wooden bat, uh, you might want to add just a little, little bit of water so it's not super duper dry and it will help to stick a little bit better. Okay, number three. Now this is advice that I give to my beginners. Um, I usually tell them just blend the edge of the ball of clay after you've smacked it down and it's, it's uh, pretty firm. If you blend that edge where it connects to the bat, that will often help the beginners to avoid a, um, a little bit of an issue of it uh, having water kind of go underneath the edge and then releasing. Okay, uh, number four. Now this is all before I've added water. Number four, I'm just going to turn the wheel super slowly and I'm going to pat with dry hands and I'm going to make a mountain shape. So this is doing a lot of the preliminary centering. If by chance when you put that initial ball on there and it's way off center, take it off, make it into a ball again, try it again. You want to get it uh, looking more centered. And obviously it's not perfect, but it's more like I have a little mountain in the center of my uh, bat, which is what I'm wanting. Oh, by the way, just as an aside, the hunks of clay that I'm using are somewhere around, I, I like one and a half. I don't remember if this was about one and a half, but um, I'm also using B-Mix, which is a cone, uh, five six stoneware um, and you can use any type of clay really to throw the heavily grogged clay is probably not so great with that all right now step number five we need to talk about how you're going to be 
uh, positioning your hands. One of the biggest things to remember is that you want to make a strong triangle. So a strong triangle is going to con consist of both hands together as one point and the elbows as the other point. Now, if I'm standing at my wheel, I'm gonna lock my elbows to my side or perhaps I could even rest them right here on the splash pan. If I am sitting at a wheel, I'm going to, again, lock my hands together as one point of the triangle and then rest my elbows on either thigh. And and that will give me the nice strong triangle. The biggest mistake that my students make is they lift their elbows and they don't have any stable um, area to uh, position them. So 90% uh, of the time as my beginners are starting, um, I look around and I'm like, drop your elbows, drop your elbows, drop your elbows, because they just have them up. And if your elbows are up, you're not going to be stable and you won't be able to get it centered well. Okay, so once you kind of figure out uh, how, how are you gonna lock your elbows, and again, I'm standing at this wheel, so I'm going to be locking my elbows to my side and perhaps to my splash pan if I'm leaning over, okay? Um, so kind of practice that first to know how you're gonna lock them. Now, step number six is going to be the first stage after we put water on. This is going to be the coning stage. Coning is exactly what it sounds like. We are going, going to be making a cone that's solid. Now, coning is done with water on your hands and water on the clay. So you always want water in between your hands and the clay to avoid friction. If you ever have clay that's drying out and it's sticking and it's not shiny, you're going to have friction. The clay is gonna to stick to your hands. It's gonna throw it off. So water is your friend. You can uh, begin to kind of have a feel for how much water you need and you can uh, you know, use less as you go along. Most of the time when I throw, I don't use very much water. That's one reason that I have the scut. Um, wheel with the built-in splash pan because it's super easy for me to clean out. I don't need to take anything and empty it at my sink because it's, it's, I don't use that much water. Okay. So coning is going to be the left hand is doing the majority of the work. So remember my wheel is turning counterclockwise and as it's turning, the clay is turning into the heel of my hand. So as I begin, I'm going to set the side of my hand down on the bat. I'm going to allow my heel of my hand to be pushing directly in. Remember, elbow is locked, okay? So if, if my forearm were like a spoke of a bicycle wheel, it would be radiating right out straight from the center, okay? So I'm going to use my left hand where it attaches to the bat Okay, so I'm pushing in with the side and a little bit with the pinky. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna remove my watch because I forgot to do that earlier. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna just boot up my speed just a tad bit. So um, usually the highest speed that I use is during the centering process and then I back off my speed. All right, so in, pushing directly in with the left with the heel of my hand, I am also going to hook my thumb over the top, my elbow is locked. Notice that my arm is not moving. If my arm is like moving like back and forth, you're not gonna get it centered. So I'm focusing my attention right down where the hand is touching the bat, where the clay and the bat meet. Again, thumb is hooked over the top. That will help it from getting too tall. So this is the first stage in coning. Now, as you throw, you might want to have a sponge. I personally like to use a sponge quite a bit to add my water. It's easier than taking my hands, but use whatever you find most comfortable, okay? Now, as I am coning now, I'm going to start to incorporate my right hand. So as I do this, again, I'm gonna just boot up my speed a little bit. As I do this, I'm going to take my right hand. You can use sponge, you can use just fingers, whatever you want. And then I'm pushing my right hand up against the side, just like my left hand is still in the same position. So I'm really anchoring. This is causing the clay to go upward. So again, left hand down at the bat, right hand, I'm focusing my attention right down at the bat. Then I allow my right hand 
and my left hand to kind of come up. And then any off-centeredness goes right up to the very top of the dome of the cone, okay? So the goal is focus on the base of the cone before you're focusing too much on the top, okay? Now this, this video, I'm trying to be pretty comprehensive in explaining why you want to do certain things. Now, once you have it coned, you don't want to go too far because you don't want to pull it off. Also remember, it has to be wet and your elbows always have to be locked. Always check your elbows, right? Then I'm going to push it down. Now when you push it down, here I'm going to turn sideways so you can see it from the side a little bit more. I'm going to walk on the side of my wheel. So as I push it down, I'm going to push away, hook my thumb over, and push it down. Again, lots of water. Okay, so that and my elbows locked. That process the squishing of it down is helping the centering process. So let's do the coning another time. For my students, I often encourage them to cone because it helps them with understanding the centering process and how to get their clay centered. All right, so left elbow is locked. Hand is gonna be down against the bat, pushing in with the heel of my left hand, right hand across from it, lots of water on there so I don't have friction. Allow my right hand to move up and any off-centeredness will come up to the tip of the cone, okay? I can do that just a little bit more. So again, left hand on the bat, firmly against the bat where the clay and the bat meet. Heel of my left hand is pushing in, pushing my right hand up against it to create the cone and bring it, follow it all the way through to the top of the dome that will take any of the off-centeredness and uh, bring it up to the top so it, it will uh, be incorporated in and centered. Now we're going to push it down again. And again, I'm standing sideways here, elbows locked. I'm going to push away from me and down using my thumb. And that brings it into center. Now this clay is perfectly centered, okay? But for my kids, I'm gonna tell you, you know, if you try coning three times, usually by your third time, you get it nice and centered. Again, I'm, I encourage my beginners to do this. I don't typically cone, um, or if I do, I usually only maybe cone once or twice. But for beginners, if you cone a few times, it's a little bit, little bit easier. So one thing that I want to also note is when I pushed it down, okay, with my, you know, when I pushed it away and down and my thumb was hooked over the top, this is really important because when your thumb is hooking over the top, it prevents you from getting a weird, funky corner out here. Like if you ever get clay that kind of like becomes like a mushroom top, uh, again, try just hooking your thumb so you want the fleshy part of your thumb to be in contact with it there, right? So you want to think about, as you're centering, how can you differ your pressure points? If you need, if your clay is like flaring out at the bottom like a mountain, maybe you need more pressure point from the side of your hand. If it's coming out like a mushroom, maybe you, again you need to hook over the top or have more pressure up here on this upper part of your hand. So you want to think about different pressure points and how you can affect the clay with different pressure points. Now. Just a reminder that remember how we want the strong triangle. So the elbows are locked, the hands are locked together. So, so far I have been doing quite a bit with a single hand or maybe my hands opposite. Now this is the point at which we really need to uh, center it and we're gonna make a nice strong um, triangle point, you know, the three triangle points, elbow, elbow, hands together. This is going to form the fully centered hockey puck that you want before you drop the middle. So as you do this part, okay, here is the hand position that I'm going to show. I usually take my left hand is on the side. So again, side of my hand, the pinky perhaps a little bit, the heel of my hand pushes in. Now the right hand, this is where this is new. And you can use your sponge in your right hand or you can just use your hand without a sponge. Your right hand is going to be like a fist, like maybe if you were to punch, except I'm going to use the side of it. So 
I'm then also going to lock together my left and my right. So I'm pushing in with the left, down with the right, and I lock them together. So can you see I'm making a, like a 90 degree angle there. And you can also help by perhaps just taking your, your thumb across the top. So again, it kind of forms that, that corner instead of it like boop, coming out like a funny little mushroom. All right, so here we go. Left hand is pushing in, right hand is pushing down, okay? And you have to find what position feels good to lock them. So I'm kind of like just taking my thumb there, but notice that I'm keeping it rounded. Again, the fleshy part of my thumb is kind of doing that work. So I'm pushing in and down. Now here's the, here's the thing that you wanna keep in mind. You always want to have pressure from the top, from the sides, from the bottom, right? So in the case of this, as I do this, I don't just want to try to center from just the side because if I have anything off-centered in the top, it's gonna to bring that off-centeredness to the top. Or conversely, I don't wanna only just have pressure from the top because if there's something off-centered, it's gonna push it to the side. You want to have pressure from both at the same time. I have another video, um, and I will also show this again in a future video as well on how to recenter your wall and how to fix. Um, and the key is again, you always want pre downward pressure, upward pressure from the bat, basically, right? And sideways pressure. So if if you don't have it open, the sideways pressure is going to be on, you know, coming from the outside. If it is open, you're going to have to have sideways pressure inside and outside and down. Okay. All right. So. Um, so this is step 10, uh, creating the hockey puck. Okay. So again, I'm locking my left hand on the left side of the clay. I push in with the heel of the hand while I hook my left thumb over the top edge to maintain a straight side. Okay. Okay. Now this is really, this is like the, the 12th step. I have not been, uh, saying what the numbers are, but hopefully I've been putting them up on the screen as we go. So step 12, I'm. this is the locking of the hands together. Left is on the side, right is on the top. Make a 90 degree angle with the hands. Make sure that you have enough water on there so it flows freely and you do not have friction, okay? Uh, remember that if you get a mushroom cap, try hooking your left thumb over the top, see if that will help, and again, always, always check your elbows. What are your elbows doing? Are your hands locked together? Are your elbows locked to your side? Okay. And this is the centering process. So when your clay is fully centered as a nice hockey puck, the top should be flat, the, sh the sides should be flat, and there should be no visible wobble nor should you feel a wobble. If you set your hands on there, you should not feel a wobble either, okay? Now, centering is the most important step in uh, having successful throwing. If you are just rushing ahead with the throwing process before you have centered, you will always be on the struggle bus with it. So you wanna have your clay fully centered. All right, here, is my uh, cutoff wire. I'm just gonna cut this to show you. So this is step one, a centered hockey puck, okay? So that, you wanna master that. With my students, we usually practice centering a couple days before we ever drop the middle. On a side note, I want to just show when you are uh, taking a new ball of clay and adding it to your bat, as long as you don't have slip that's covering that spot where you just cut it with the wire, you can take the new ball of clay and stick it right to it. But if you do have a lot of slip that covers that, um, you will want to uh, scrape that off. But there's no reason to scrape it off if it's you know, the same moisture. This is a soft clay that I just cut off. Cut off. I would not be doing that if I had, um, you know, a dry hunk of clay on there. I'm going to go through this way faster one final time.
I did skip the uh, the blending of the ball to the uh, wheel. I wasn't thinking about that because I don't typically do it, but I do um, suggest that for my beginners. All right, so again, I'm concentrating where the clay and the bat meet before I bring my hands up. Bring it all the way up to the top of the dome and that will bring the off-centeredness off up. Now I'm going to push it down. Okay, and away. Now let's do that again. Concentrate on where it's meeting the bat. Then I bring my hands all the way up. Once the once it's fairly centered down there at the base, then I can continue up. And then I push down and away. And let's do it one more time. And lastly, to make it into the hockey puck, left is on the side, right is on the top. Alter your pressure points. If you need to use fingertips, you can use fingertips. If you need to tilt your hand, tilt your hand. But you want to get a straight side and a flat top without a mushroom cap. You can use the fleshy part of your thumb to kind of hook it over to prevent getting a, a weird top edge. Check out the next video for how I show to drop the middle and open the clay.